Hello, I'm Kamala Roberts, and welcome to Zing TV's New York Links, your local news and entertainment program from New York City to the world. As we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, we have two, not one, but two incredible young women to honor today with their stories and their lives. They are both medical doctors, and interestingly, they are identical twin sisters. Dr. Oni Blackstock is a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Medical School. She practices internal medicine at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx. Dr. Uche Blackstock is also a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Medical School. She is on the last leg of her residency at Kings County Hospital Center in Brooklyn, where she practices emergency medicine. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Kamala. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. So, first off, I have to say, in doing my research, there's a photo with you guys and violence right. that is <laughs> my favorite out of all the photos. And our, our viewers will get to see it throughout the show. Um, and one of you has it at home on the dresser. Is it Oni? Exactly. Yes, I'd I say it is your photo. favorite, too. Yes, it's definitely uh, our favorite and my personal favorite mm. photo. Um, it, it reminds me back just to the time when we were young when our mother really got behind us and actually took Suzuki classes with us. So that, cl that picture was of us taking, picture, taking uh, a picture while uh, playing our violin. Mm. And our mother actually also played violin with us. Okay. So. Uche, do you have it at home also? Is it one of your favorites? <laughs> actually, it's one of my favorites. It used to be my uh, Facebook profile picture. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I loved it. And our father actually also loves it mm. a lot. Now, you guys have joked around that you're so close, you feel like you're <laughs> dating one another sometimes. So how is it important for you being twins to have your own individuality and life and, and being that you have spent so much time together growing up? Um, well, I mean, for, you know, for most of our life, we were, we did, we were inseparable. We did almost everything together. We went to school together mm -hmm. all the way up to medical school. And after we graduated from medical school, we decided that we would have to part ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that was probably the best decision that we ever made. We decided that we would not live together mm -hmm. and that we would do our residency programs um, in different parts of the city and different hospitals. And actually, I think we've actually gotten closer okay. as a result of that okay. and become more independent mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we want to hear more about your individuality, and we are back after this break. This is your girl, Cecilia, and right about now you're watching Zing TV. Big up yourself. Them not hot like we, like we, you're watching TV. Bad girl say, I'm waiting, because Zing TV is playing. I love you, baby. Hi everybody, this is Maxi Priest, and don't forget you're watching Zinc TV, New York Lynx, every time. Love and all. Bless. Peace. Hey yo, it's me, Marshall Montano, HD, and in time I'm in New York City, I'm locked to Zinc TV. Number one TV, it's the Mink TV. Hey! Zinc TV is New York Lynx. And we are back, speaking to doctors Uche and Oni Blackstock, celebrating Women's History Month. So, Oni, Uche, when or at what age were you when you decided you needed to be on, on your own and be your own individuals and step out from one another? Right. So I think, you know, Uche and I are really fortunate that uh, we've had each other and each other's support throughout most of our lives. But mm -hmm. as Uche had mentioned, I think once we went to medical school, um, upon leaving, we realized that we really needed to uh, pave our own paths. and. Uh, sort of celebrate our own individuality and you know Uche was interested in doing a residency in emergency medicine and I was interested in doing residency in internal medicine mm -hmm. and there was the perfect time for us to sort of find our own uh, paths in life and she decided to move to Brooklyn and I live in Harlem mm -hmm. and we are completing our residencies but we're still just as close but we now are able to appreciate each other a lot more. Okay and I was reading that someone had mentioned at one point like I think it's when you were apartment hunting um, that it was easy to tell you apart because I believe Uche had long hair, you had your dreads then and yeah. Oni had short hair. Like, did you purposefully say, I'm going to have long hair, I'm going to have short hair so people can um, distinguish us? Probably not consciously, but probably subconsciously. I think that it's important for us to be individuals and part of that is to make it kind of easier on people to mm. be able to tell us apart. <laughs> 
So tell me about your upbringing with your parents, especially your mom, Dr. Dale Blackstock. I know she was an integral part of both of you becoming doctors. And how, how has that been for you and her life, giving mm -hmm. back to the community and service-wise? Right. So I think we're really fortunate because both of our parents um, community is incredibly important and um, that was something that they demonstrated to us uh, in all aspects um, of our life and so um, our mother you know she grew up in Brooklyn New York mm -hmm. it was really important for her to to return after medical school in Boston to Brooklyn mm -hmm. to live and to work and to give back to the community in which she was raised mm -hmm. and um, we were you know, very fortunate to be able to see her interact with her patients, go to community health fairs, mm -hmm. um, be part of, um, you know, physicians groups that really um, did a lot of community work. So I think through her actions and her words, we definitely saw what her commitment was. And our mm -hmm. father uh, was exactly the same way. So, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I, I thought about other professions, but um, it was sort of a natural mm -hmm. um, path to go into medicine because mm -hmm. we saw that it was such a rewarding career for our mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also I feel like our success, the success that we've had in life, we greatly attribute to our parents. Mm -hmm. And also, I feel it's part of my mother's legacy as well. Our mom, um, Oni didn't mention this, but our mom was raised on public assistance. Mm -hmm. She was uh, one of uh, six children okay. born to you know, a single mother. And she really did not have much support in her life. My, my grandmother was very hardworking, but she was not like the nourishing, supportive type. Mm -hmm. So my mother really on her own and through the help of some very uh, special teachers and professors who took a special interest in her, um, you know, was, was able to be as successful as she was. Mm -hmm. But really, she was truly a leader. And I feel like, our, as I said before, our success really is a tribute to, to her, her hard work, and, and, and her legacy. When, when our mom passed away, she knew that we would be, we would be okay yeah. because she had done such a wonderful job raising us. Mm. Okay, a wonderful, wonderful story. So Oni, you mm -hmm. deal with women affected with HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. How, tell us more about your work and how you try to help our community and use your mm -hmm. influence to reach out to young women. So my interest in, in HIV AIDS began when I was in medical school and um, I went abroad to South Africa, um, to Durban, South Africa, which has among the highest uh, prevalence rates of HIV. And I also went to Ghana and West Africa mm -hmm. to also do work um, looking at a pati examining patients who were starting to take HIV medications. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that was that women were being disproportionately affected um, by this epidemic um, mm -hmm. for many different reasons, because of, of economics, because of social status. And then coming back to New York and doing my residency here, I saw that many of the same issues were um, in play as well. And that women, again, in terms of the epidemic in the United States, um, among African Americans, women are being disproportionately affected. Um, mm -hmm. And so my interest in women's health, coupled with my interest in HIV, has led me to really want to work in the future towards um, H creating HIV prevention programs mm -hmm. to really decrease the incidence of HIV in our community. Okay. And would being able to travel like that, would, what did you come away right. with being able to do that? Right. So I think I was really fortunate to be able to, to really go abroad and bear witness um, mm -hmm. to really the... Um, really the travesty of, of the HIV and the tragedy of the HIV epidemic. Um, but what I realize is that there's so much work that needs to be done here mm -hmm. um, domestically. Like okay. I think it's, you know, of course, people in other countries, especially developing countries, um, are, are very resource challenged and need as much help as possible. But I think mm -hmm. we have to realize that there is a lot of work that needs to be done mm -hmm. here as well. Starts at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.